Hello and welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals series. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit more MIDI recording and we're going to expand our song to include a chorus. If you've been enjoying this video series so far and you want to help support my channel, uh, check out the Patreon link below, that's the best way to do it. You'll be able to copy and uh, download all of these projects and follow along side by side. First things first, we've got this system exclusive data track at the bottom. This occurred randomly when I was doing MIDI exports in the last um, in the last episode. Don't worry about it. If you have a look at it in the list editor, you can see that it's a standard MIDI file event, SMF. This is just a, a standard part of the MIDI protocol. Something in the data that I was extracting uh, was uh, contained system exclusive data. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole today. Let's just throw it away. I also want to re-extract this piano line that I merged together at the end of the last episode. I actually quite like the melodies and I regret sticking them back together again. So I'm going to split them. Open my logical editor. Go to extract lowest note from chord. And do that twice. Throw the original track away. This is basically just the leftover notes. And what I'm going to do is stick those two MIDI parts together. And that is going to be my melody for the verse. If I make the, the verse the full 16 bars long and stick those MIDI parts together, let's have a listen to what we've got so far. This first eight bars I'm really happy with. I think this was the better of the constructed melodies, melodies that we got last time. Just make this note a bit longer. So this section over here is a little bit weak. I'm going to get rid of this D and I'm going to try and put something else in its place. Uh, control, click with the mouse. Alt, click for the right locator. Okay, that'll do. So I've figured out what notes I want. Now I'm going to come out of uh, new parts stacked mode, which is where we were in the last episode. And I'm going to go back to my default uh, MIDI recording method, which is merge mix. And you see that as soon as I selected Merge, it auto-selected Mix for me because um, Merge and uh, Stacked is not a valid uh, combination of options. So it's auto-selected Mix for me. That's brilliant. That's what I want. A quick mention of these other um, modes. I basically never use them. I'm either New Parts Stacked or Merge Mix. Very occasionally, I'll do New Parts Mix Stacked. That basically doesn't mute uh, the old parts as it loops around like last episode it was looping around and muting the old stuff well with mix stack no mute it doesn't it just leaves them all unmuted I'll use that occasionally but today merge mix is our friend so there's my part once I've auditioned and I've decided what I want to do I actually stop the song and start it again and the reason is because we have this thing called retrospective recording. Cubase actually remembers every note you play and it maintains a buffer. I have mine set to, I think it's 10,000 um, pieces of MIDI data. And as long as the buffer isn't exceeded, if you press record, if I enter retrospective recording and say, can you insert that data as a linear recording? It will literally insert those notes. You can see it's just created them as a new MIDI part. Here it is. And it'll undo that. I don't often use retrospective recording, to be absolutely honest with you. Kind of a manual control kind of guy. So I prefer to have total control over what I'm doing, but I think retrospective recording interacts or interferes with your recording. If you have it looping for a very long time and you press record without stopping it first, I have seen instances where all of the MIDI notes cluster at the beginning of the part. So I just basically just don't allow myself to potentially fall into that issue. Make sure you've got the right track selected as well, which I just didn't. Okay, 
great stuff. Take it out of cycle and carry on listening. Okay, we've got a hole at the end here. We want, want, some, want some more notes there. So we'll cycle around this last two bars. So that's F, E. Happy with those notes and to record. Okay, now we're in a position to start thinking about our chorus. You may recall when I very quickly threw this rhythm track down, I created two different drum parts. These eight bars that I've just picked up are a different rhythm to the first eight bars. So if we just have this as the first section, the verse uh, rhythm, then we can use that other rhythm track as the chorus. And what I want to do for the chorus is make use of this E at the end of the melody line. So this is the connecting note that gets us into the chorus. And it's being played underneath a G7. It's not a particularly comfortable bedfellow with G7. It kind of turns it into a G13 effectively. But what we can do is when we go to the chorus, if we modulate to the relative minor of C major, which is A minor, then E becomes the fifth of that chord. So if we play an E minor seven, where this melody note is occurring, it's going to sound lovely. What I'm going to do is create a new chord in the chord track, open it up, play an E minor seven. Cubase will figure it out for me. And now when we transition into the chorus, which I've decided is now going to be in A minor, if we play an A minor at the beginning of the chorus, it will sound lovely. I'll put that one chord in manually and then we'll use some other techniques to get this stuff recorded. Okay, there's our A minor. So let's just have a quick listen to what we've got so far. Okay, so that's just really simple harmonic progression uh, theory. Uh, perfect fifths going down to root chords sounds magnificent. So now we've got our chorus, which is going to be in A minor. And so we want to have a bit of a play with the chords in this section. Now our chorus is going to be eight bars long, but we'll just do it in two, ju two chunks of four. And I'm going to mute the chord track so that it doesn't get in the way as I'm figuring out what these chords are going to be. A minor, E minor, A minor, it's like a C down to a G. So once I've figured out what my progression is going to be, I'm going to record those notes in. see them in the piano track. Let's quantize these. And then we want to figure out our next four bars. Same kind of thing, I'm going to get the, the loop up and running, but this time I'm going to make a bit more use of the fact that we're in merge mix mode. I'm going to record it in layers. So I'm going to press asterisk I'm happy with that first F. And now I need to figure out what my next chord is going to be. Okay, happy with the G. Take it back out of record mode. And I can just keep on layering these chords each time.
wasn't happy with that. Let's undo it. Try again. Okay. Quantize all that. Now this is a B dim, B diminished chord. I want to add um, a seventh on the top of it. And the same with the seven actually. turn both of those chords into sevenths. Um, half diminished, B half diminished and G7. And that's my entire pattern. Quantize it, zoom out so that we can see what's going on. One final thing to do, those chords were recorded in the piano track, but I actually want them to be chords in the chord track. That's where the rest of the, the structure of the song lives. So how do I get these chords into the chord track? There's a really easy way to do it. I'm going to select all of the chords that I'm interested in. Notice that I've ignored this first chord because I've already inserted the A minor. I don't need that one. But all of the rest of the chords I want Cubase to throw into the chord track. Head up into Project, Chord Track, Create Chord Symbols. All of these options are fairly self-explanatory. I never mess with them. Perfectly happy with the defaults. Say OK. And now it's copied all of those chords into my chord track and I can delete the chords out of the original part. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so there's the transition into the chorus, that went well. And obviously, if I loop around, we're transitioning back into the verse chord, um, um, fluently, with the last chord of the chorus being a G7, it transitions beautifully into the C and everyone's happy. There is a way that you can record manually directly into the chord track. I will show you very briefly. What I'll do is pick all of these chords up drag them down onto the piano line and then mute them all. What I'm going to do now is record directly into the chord track. The way that you do that is click the chord track itself and record enable it. It doesn't record enable by default like all of the other tracks do. If I select the piece piano track, it automatically record enables it. Chord track doesn't. But if I press notes on the keyboard now, I'm hitting the keys on the keyboard, but you can't hear anything. What you need to do is engage monitoring on the track that you want to hear. So because this piece piano track contains the instance of the sound that I want to hear, the electric piano, by enabling monitoring, it means it will hear any MIDI data I press on the keyboard. So now, even though I'm recording into the chord track, I'm hearing the piece piano. So now I'll get the song running, enter record mode. And you can see that it's entering the chords as I play. I'm only going to do the first couple. The problem is you can't quantize these, these events. So if I really heavily zoom in, you can see it's slightly before the bar. Um, quantizing doesn't work on them. So if you can record directly into the chord track using this kind of monitor-based system, but I think it's much easier to actually just record straight into the MIDI and then drag it up into the chord track once you're done. I want to get the chords back in the chord track. The easiest way to do that is to nip into the history, scroll down to the bottom and find the point where I dropped the chords onto the track. That's exactly what I want. And that's our chorus chords recorded. That'll do us for today. Hope you've enjoyed the episode and if you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.